Greetings again, Ask Blog viewers. Um, on Tuesday night, Leo Volti made her 100th appearance for Arsenal. I just wanted to do a little bit of a video um, about Leah, not least because I had the opportunity to speak to her immediately after the game. Um, and I'll drop some of that audio into the into the video in a minute. Um, but I guess I just wanted to, I mean, a little bit pay tribute to this player, I think, who's been so, so important over the time that she's been at Arsenal since she joined in 2018. And I think really charting Leah's journey um, emphasises what a, what a kind of really important player she's been, but also her evolution under Jonas Eideval compared to Joe Montemoro when she joined. And a, when you look around women's football at the moment, how important players in this position are considered. But I think really it's worth going back to the beginning with Leah's journey at Arsenal. She joined in the summer of 2018. Um, and when I spoke to her on Tuesday night, I kind of said, <clears throat> when she signed, I really felt that that signalled the full transition to Joe Montemoro's Arsenal. So Joe uh, joined the club in November 2017 and, and he took Arsenal on a good run towards the end of that season. But the, the football was a little bit more kind of, maybe a little bit more fundamental than we saw the next season, 2018-19, when Arsenal won the WSL title. And let's not forget, get Leo was such an important player in that team that even though she got injured at the end of January and missed the last three and a half months of the season, she was still voted into the PFA Team of the Year, WSL Team of the Year, which I think shows you how much of an impression she made with her performances. But... What was kind of really interesting, I think, about that signing, particularly looking back, cycling back, is at the time, that defensive midfield position didn't feel like a priority as Joe was kind of rebuilding or recasting the team in his image. Because Arsenal had Dominic Janssen playing there, who's, you know, one of the best players in the world, still is, um, and obviously moved back to centre-half, um, particularly at Wolfsburg and for the national team. But... You know, Arsenal had that really top class player there already, but bringing Leah in was one of the first things that Joe did. So in the summer of 2018, Leah Volti joined Arsenal from Tabina Potsdam in Germany. And but the, the transfer in reality was done a lot sooner than that. So she joined in the summer. But I mean, I first heard about it in about March 2018. So when you consider that Joe joined in November 2017, one of the first things he did was go out and identify Leo Volti as a player that he wanted for his team. And she really, really became like the glue of the Arsenal team, uh, particularly in Joe's kind of very patient possession style of football. We were so used to seeing Leah in that number six position, like at the base of the centre circle, dropping back between the centre halves, receiving the ball and distributing um, and playing that kind of slow, I always call it snake charming style of football, not being afraid to go backwards, to go forwards, quite fluid interchange of positions. And when you do that, you need players that, that kind of come back and plug in. Um, and Leah Volti really, really does that to a very high level. So when she sees a fullback going forward, she's good at dropping back into that space for centre-back charges forward. And you look at Arsenal's centre-halves at the moment, Hafaeli, Leah Williamson, you know, they like to go on a bit of a dribble and go forward. And Leah's very good at filling those spaces. And that's what she did in Joe Montemoro's Arsenal. And when you consider the other things that Joe did with the team that he waited a year or 18 months to do. So Manu Zinsberger in goal, for example, to kind of replace Sari van Wienendahl. That didn't happen till the summer of 2019. Jen Beattie coming into the team at centre-half to replace Louise Quinn. That didn't happen till summer 2019. In the left-back position, you know, Emma Mitchell came out of the team. Uh, Katrina Veyer played there. Katie McKay played there. Again, that happened a little bit later. Um, and so it, it really was really clear that it was Joe's first priority to get this player, even though Arsenal already had a top class player in that position. And, and well, Arsenal won the title that year. So you can see how key she was to that team and how key she was to Joe's principles of play. Now, things have changed for Leah a little bit, uh, quite a bit, actually, under Jonas Eideval. Um, and I just want to drop in some of the audio from when I spoke to her last night because she's playing a different role under Jonas now. She's not always in that sixth position. She's not kind of always receiving the ball from the centre half. She's moved into, I mean, it's irresistible, the comparison with Granit Xhaka 
uh, in the men's team because it's very, very similar, not least because they're both Swiss as well. Um, but she's moved into more of kind of a left eight role and she does rotate the pivot role with Kim Little uh, in an attempt to make Arsenal a little bit less predictable when they build up. But Leah's much more advanced. She's pressing a lot more, which is much more in tune with Jonas's style. And I spoke to her about that last night, not least because I spoke to her about it at the beginning of last season. And she said, as you'll hear here, she said that she was unhappy with how long it took her to adjust to that role. I mean, as I said last year to you, to you I think it just took a bit of time for me because it was a, a big change in my game. Um, so I think I adapted to it towards the end of last season a bit better. And I think right now I'm feeling really confident and comfortable in, in my position because we could both adapt our ideas a little bit. And I think right now it fits perfectly to a game. So now I'm back to enjoying my game. And I think start of last season, I struggle a bit with that because when you feel like you're not in a mood, it's not getting better, but week by week, then you feel, yeah, not, it's not, it wasn't a burnout, but it was kind of like, just, I don't have fun playing football, and I think I'm back um, having that feeling, and that is great. So that's Leah talking last night about adjusting to that role, and I think you could really see last season that from about Christmas onwards, she really got it, she really started to get it, and she became a great kind of pressing uh, left eight quite a lot of the time on top of all the other things that we know she can do. She also became hugely important in the second half of last season because Arsenal lost Hafaeli to injury. So they had, you know, Lotta Wubben Moy is a brilliant player to bring in. That doesn't really weaken your team. But what it did mean was that Arsenal didn't have a left footed centre half to build up play. They had two right footers in Leah and Lotta. And this is another way in which Leah is so unique. She is so two footed. And over the last few seasons at Arsenal, she's nominally right footed, but her kind of her past statistics basically over the last three seasons map at about 50-50. In fact, last season, and a big part of the reason for this is because she's moved into more of that left eight role. And also because when Hafaeli was out injured, she, we Arsenal relied on her more to get into those kind of left centre back spaces so she could distribute with her left foot. And last season, she played 52% of her passes with her left foot and 48% with her right, which for a right footed player is phenomenal. And that's one of the reasons that her teammates call her snake hips as well, because she's got this really nice way of, of turning and fainting um, and throwing opposition off balance because she can go both ways. And that's, that's the thing about being a two-footed footballer and why I bang on and on and on about this. I don't understand you're a professional footballer. Your feet are your two biggest tools. I cannot for the life of me understand why so many players opt to only use one of them. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and Leah, uh, you know, she had this kind of drilled into her, this two-footedness when she was younger because she had a, a, a PE coach at boarding school who would make the kids do press-ups when they used their wrong foot. And Noel Maritz was at the same school and she had the same thing. And you look at her, very two-footed as well, can play left or right. But this is a big, big tool in Leah's armoury, the ability to play basically equally well with both feet. And it's not just that it opens up angles for her. It gives her a lovely gait and a lovely balance when she plays. And it just makes it so hard to get the ball off her. Um, but really last season, I think, it teaches you sometimes as a football fan because a new coach comes in and he asks for slightly different things of players and you kind of think, oh, can that player do that? I'm so used to seeing them do something else. But really quality players can learn and Leah did learn to play a different role. And you heard there in the audio the way she described it to me was that she didn't enjoy the beginning of last season because she didn't feel like she was improving quickly enough, which gives you an insight, I think, into the mentality of the player as well and that desire for improvement, but that she really started to enjoy it in the second half of last season. And when you look at Arsenal's, some of Arsenal's bigger defeats last season, Birmingham, the only WSL game they lost, the one I think that keeps Arsenal fans awake at night still, she pulled out in the warm-up and I think that really destabilised Arsenal that day because they didn't really have a proper number six to come in for her and that's, that's still a bit of a weakness in the squad and I'll come on to that in a minute. But also the Wolfsburg away game in the Champions League as well, she had to miss that um, due to some absurd UEFA protocol that meant she wasn't allowed to travel to the game alone and so 
you know, two of Arsenal's biggest, most painful defeats last season came when Leo wasn't playing. And I think that shows you how important she is. And when you look across women's football at the moment, the world transfer record was broken this summer for Kira Walsh, a player, a very similar player to Leah in the same position. Chelsea tried to break the world transfer record to bring Giero in uh, from PSG. Um, because they've lost Melanie Leupoltz at the moment. And these players are at a real premium at the moment, these number sixes. There's not many of them about, which is why, you know, you've got incidents like Barcelona buying from Manchester City, Chelsea trying to buy from PSG. There aren't many hidden gems. Lena Oberdorf at Wolfsburg signed a big new contract this summer because Wolfsburg understand what they have in that position. And so teams are spending or trying to spend a lot of money on players in this position and you know at the moment Arsenal are really really lucky I think to have uh, a player like Leah one of the best in the world at that position and, and someone who I think's really grown into a real leader in this Arsenal team and not least because of the way she's been able to adapt her game which I think really shows you what an intelligent player she is as well, as well as a really important one. I think if you polled Arsenal fans about the one player they don't want getting injured this season, I think Leah Volti would probably win that poll.